Hello, this is part 5 of my QuickSocket I.O. tutorial. In this part, we are going to talk about callbacks. Uh, so, in the previous part, I showed you how to send a message or an event uh, from the client to the server, and then we, we've seen how the server can respond by sending another event uh, to the client. Uh, so, this is a, a very common pattern where the, uh, the client sends an event to the server and, and then it expects a response. Uh, or sometimes, we, we haven't seen this, but we are going to see that sometimes the server may send an event to the client and likewise expect a response from the client. So um, this is a very common pattern. So uh, in Socket IO, there is a way for an event to generate a response without the need for the other side to send a different event like we did in the previous part. So uh, so in, in this part, we are going to see how that works, how we can change that some event to, uh, to generate a response without using that second event some result. So uh, let's start the server once again and let's open um, our client our, and our server. Um, so here we are. So we have uh, we have the client which sent the uh, the event to the server. So in the server, we are going to change this, and instead of sending the result as a separate event, we are going to send it as a response. And in the Python side, this is implemented directly by returning the value. Uh, from from the handler function, so we are going to remove that and just return the result. So um, on the client side, to receive this result, uh, we we need the client to request it. So the way that works is in the emit function as a third optional argument, we we can add a callback function. So if the emit has a function as a third argument, then, then uh, the client will ask the server to send a response, and then the Python server will collect the response from the returned value of the handler function. And then we are going to receive that here as an argument. So we can go ahead here and log the uh, the result. And now we are not going to be using this some result event anymore. So let's save this. Uh, the worker uh, restarted. So let's connect and open the console. So you can see here that we are logging the, the number three. Uh, note that it, this in this occasion, we just returned the number. So here in the Python side, we returned the number. So that's exactly what we received. If, if we were to return this as a dictionary, then now we can, uh, okay, let's, Sometimes it takes a couple of seconds for GUnicorn to reload for some reason. Let's wait until it reloads. Okay. And now you can see that the result is exactly what we return from the function. So, uh, so now you know how the client can request a response for, uh, for an event that it sends to the server. Uh, this feature also works in the reverse direction. So when the server sends a, a, an event to the client and expects a response, uh, it, it can also be provided. So uh, for that, uh, let's say, so let, let's add a second exchange that is initiated by the server. So 
this is going to be a little bit more uh, complex than before. So uh, in the connect event, what we are going to do is, and this is going to be a good example of the server sending uh, an event to a client uh, out of the blue. So, uh, so basically w without the client sending an event first. So here what we are going to say is uh, start background task and uh, let's call it task and pass sit as an argument. So so basically what we're doing here is telling the uh, telling the server to start uh, a, a background task that will run in parallel with everything else and this task will receive the session ID from the client as an argument. And here what we are going to do is we are going to wait five seconds and then out of the blue, we are going to send an event to the client. So uh, continuing with the arithmetic theme, now we can, we can request a multiplication uh, and here we can pass numbers three and four, let's say. Uh, so um, this is only going to start the thread and then return immediately. So the, the connection event will, will run and finish. And then this task will run independently, wait five seconds and then initiate a, a an event to the client. So the, the, the event is mult. So now we go to the client and implement mult and we receive the data. And here uh, we can we can start by printing the data just to make sure that we have it and this is still taking time to reload there we go so now we need to wait five seconds and in five seconds we should have the event or actually i need to reload this because i i did not refresh the client so reload without the cache and now we need to wait five seconds and here is our our uh, event so uh, we have numbers which is an array of two elements so here we uh, we can create a result which is going to be data dot numbers zero data dot numbers one and to send this result back to the client, we have to use a callback function. Uh, so this is, uh, as, as, as you probably know, in JavaScript, callbacks are a very, uh, very important. A lot of things are done uh, with callbacks. So in this case, you, uh, you have a second argument into your handler function. That is the, the callback function. So now, we can Im invoke the callback with the result. And this is how we pass that response back to, uh, to the other side. So in the server, we, uh, we have this emit and here we can, in, in the simpler option, we can also add a callback which is going to be a, a separate function. And this function is going to receive the result. So here we can print the, uh, the result. So let's try this first, and then let's see if we can improve this and make it a little bit more Pythonic because this is, uh, honestly, this is kind of ugly. So, uh, so let's give it a try, make sure that it works, and then continue with some improvements. Okay, so let's refresh and wait the five seconds. Oh, of course, seven. Should have done multiplication here. Yep. 
So let's fix that. And try one more time. Make sure that we receive the correct result. Okay, there we go. So so now now we have the result. So uh, this is uh, fairly normal for JavaScript, but in Python, uh, using callback functions is extremely uh, awkward and rare. Uh, you normally don't see this type of pattern uh, in in Python code. So the socket IO server for Python provides a, a, a better option uh, so we uh, we can remove the callback and then instead of using the emit function we can use call uh, which basically takes the emit function and the callback combines all of that into a single function call and makes it look like a normal call uh, that, as if you're calling a function so then we will be getting the result as the the return value from the call function and here we can print the result so now we can eliminate that ugly callback so let's give it another try and make sure that everything works okay let's refresh Cannot use call to broadcast, of course. I forgot that this needs to go to the correct user. Okay, let's give it a try. Let's wait five seconds. And there we go. Then, then we have our 12, and we don't have to worry about those callbacks anymore. Uh, so remember that this call way of sending an event and receiving the response is particular to the Python socket IO server implementation. Uh, in the client, if you want to avoid callbacks, then JavaScript provides a number of ways to do that uh, based on promises. Uh, so so you, you have some options as well that I'm not going to discuss in this tutorial. Uh, but there's definitely ways to uh, to improve this uh, on the JavaScript side.